Welcome to Far East Wargaming. Today we're bringing you another Heresy Thursdays. My name is Richard, and once again, I've got Jason with me. Hello, everyone. And we're bringing you the latest reveal by Games Workshop, the Librarian Console. So let's just crack into it, Jason. Uh, thoughts? Uh, where do I start? Um, I was more excited about the tank commanders and the special rules last week than I am about this model. I'll be perfectly frank. Um, my opinion, the last thing we needed was another mediocre Mark VI model. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but yeah, I, I'm not very excited this week. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's rather a small letdown, to be honest. Also, it's not a plastic model. It is a resin model, so it's coming from Forge World again. And just the fact that with resin, there's some things you... It's very hard to, to modify itself. Uh, looking at the loadout, he's given you uh, a Force Axe, or an Axe, which I'm guessing people will play as a Force Axe, which is probably one of the best weapons to to use on a Librarian, Force force being the rule that doubles the user's strength on a Psychic test. But yeah, um, looking at the model itself, oh look, I'll say the sculpt is okay. I don't think it's amazing. Uh, the backpack is unique. The, the pose is definitely unique. Again, once again, we're in the Mark VI armor, which... Um, my personal opinion, too much of it. I know why they're doing it, but a librarian itself would have been one of these older space marines. Uh, they were there until was the Edict of Nikea, when they were kind of tried to be phased out by the Emperor. So they wouldn't have, in my opinion, been given the latest armors. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That was a point I was going to make. I mean, well, I mean, the model itself, you're right. I mean, it's it's okay. Uh, I think this model could probably easily be converted by anybody with a plastic Mark VI and a halfway decent bits box. Um, I mean, really, the only thing that I see on this that's actually semi-unique is perhaps, you know, the, the hand pose. But if you've got a, a 40k Chaos Sorcerer bit from the Kill Team box, you can actually make this. Um, you can sculpt all of these, this trim, this relatively simple trim with green stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not really excited about the model. Now... I am excited about again more conversion potential if you if you sense a running theme compared to last week. Uh, I can easily see this model being converted for a lot of other HQ choices or you know consoles. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I would have loved to have seen this model in Mark II, pre Edict, right? Or you know Mark uh, even Mark V probably would be more applicable in this particular case as a librarian that you know. Post the heresy is now cobbling together his gear and he's got his homemade, uh, I don't know, his, his homemade psychic hood that he's trying to figure out how to use. I would have rather seen something like that than just another Mark VI. Yeah, I don't know, bleh. Yeah, I, th I think you're right in terms of I do like the, the lore side of things. Again, we're very narrative in 30K, so the following is close to canon, i say, as possible. I, I agree with you. They were, after the edict, they were trying to be phased out, so they were shunned. Well, in theory, they were shunned. So they wouldn't have been given these new things. So cobbling together marks of armor, four, three, five, two bits and bobs, seems a lot more suitable for the Psyker myself. And then we're t speaking about the Psychic Hood in terms of there's nothing here really representing that. Now, I know it doesn't have to be a physical hood. It's a, it's a tool, per se. But I just don't see anything unique about this model. Um... The, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at the keys. Yeah. The keys are available on various plastics. I think the uh, the veterans from the Sp uh, Dark Angels have these type, type of add-on bits. Again, very easily made ourselves. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the book on the back. I mean, the backpack is kind of cool when you look at the, the, the backside of the backpack. I mean, not so much the skull helm, although the skull helm does, you know, it does. It's a bit of an old school. For those of you that remember, actually, the emblem for psychers the skull and kind of a little half halo looking thing so yeah that's a cool shout out um i mean the helmet i guess is unique you know you might be able to mix that helmet in like if you were making up a cool thousand suns character or, or something like this um but yeah i mean just in general i'm not I'm, I'm not real impressed with this and from a lore perspective you're absolutely right if if psychers were the outcasts and most of the primarchs didn't like them why would they be rocking the new bling I mean, let's just be perfectly honest, but uh, the heresy fluff and the heresy lore has been very loose uh, and uh, and free-flowing ever since 2.0 came out, but uh, that's a separate conversation. Yeah, like, I'm not, 
I don't want to diss the librarians. They're actually a very strong model on the tabletop. The psychic, the access to psychic powers and the variety of psychic powers make them quite game-changing if you do decide to feel them. We ourselves, I don't feel them myself. I've never really seen a need, but certain armies could definitely use them. Or as a more anti-psychic, if you're playing against psychers, having a librarian, especially with a psychic hood, which, what, minus two 18-inch range uh, psychic checks for anybody taking psychic checks on the opposing side, that's a strong thing to have if you're playing Thousand Suns and literally every unit is more or less taking a psychic check. Yeah, I mean, there's some nastiness. I mean, librarians are, are I think, a bit underplayed in many areas because just they, 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 I, I think a lot of people just haven't seen the potential for one reason or another. I mean, of course the meta chasers kind of understand it. I mean, think about it. If you had a world leaders librarian that was basically auto pinning a target before a big block of uh, the spoilers charged in totally against the fluff. I mean, world leaders librarians. Okay. Uh, or even death guard librarians turning off reactions, you know, and then being able to shoot one of their heavy, heavy support squads with abandon. I mean, they're powerful, right? And if you look at the, the various psychic powers, there there's definitely some strong contenders in there. Uh, but you're right. Our meta doesn't play them a lot. I mean, when I went to No Retreat, there wasn't a lot of librarians. Um, it just doesn't seem to be as commonly used as some of the other consoles for whatever reason. Well, I think you're right in terms of the meta chases. They're, I, don't, I don't want to say they're game-breaking, but a smart player using them to their optimal potential it can be kind of game breaking. You were just pointing out there's uh, some of the psychic powers. I'd have to double check. I think it's the telepathy power um, that allows you to do a, an assault six. And every time you hit with that, it's a minus to the leadership for a pinning check on that unit. You were talking about that using a death guard, having maybe, what, 10 Volkites shooting the other heavy support squad and not getting any reactions back. That there. No, no. Can... Yeah. Telepathy is the pinning one. So actually, that was the World Eaters example, right? So okay. can, if you can imagine, or even Night Lords, right? Um, if you can imagine, you're playing Night Fight, so you're already at minus one leadership, and then you get off six successful hits with this Hallucinations power. That right there is a minus seven to the check. So pretty much any unit is automatically pinned. And then all of a sudden, your big blob of Rampagers or your nasty Terror Squad or whatever else, um, I mean, it's it's brutal it's nasty you know any unit with a with a death star a hand-to-hand -hand death star would love that particular power hallucination and the auto pinning the death guard was coming back to the other power which is the one that we were that we wanted to look at that's uh turning off reactions right so imagine turning off a shooting reaction so that you can't get return fired now all of a sudden your heavy support squad doesn't have to worry about getting wiped out i think that's um, part of telepathy as well i think that's their psychic power in telepathy and then the hallucinations is the psychic weapon for for that entire divination class so that yes like discipline yeah 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 it's um yep they, they they are powerful i think what you were saying you saw you played up against one right in no retreat uh doing something wholly different than that <laughs> Yeah, I happen to go against, uh, and before I get into the story, first of all, let me say uh, my opponent, Matt, is an amazing guy, and the army was fantastic, and he was fantastic, and we had a blast. So I got to get that out of the way because I'm definitely not criticizing this. Um, he was running an armored spearhead list for the Ultramarines, and he had, uh, for example, I think one of his squadrons was two Sakar and Arcus, and he happened to have a librarian that was granting basically precision shots, precision strikes, to a unit of Sakar and Arcus, if you can imagine how horrifying that is. Um, so yeah, so basically they were sniping, and with an Arcus on its main weapon getting eight shots, precision strikes, I'm, I'm, brutal, I'm brutalizing the pronunciation, I'm sorry, um, on a five plus, sniping characters, right? Uh, it, it's pretty nasty combination, and that was one of the ones that I went against at No Retreat. But again, great opponent, fun game, had a blast, nasty combination. No, like I said, it's uh, w without without malice here in terms of it's smart to do it if you're if you're looking at this from this point. Now, I will say, Perils of the Warp um, is kind of scary in itself. It's D three wounds if you fail it, only invulnerable saves for most characters. That's nearly a dead character. You only got two wounds, so uh, just a baseline centurion is two wounds only. You roll, you fail a leadership nine check. And then you roll, what, four, three, four, five, six, and you're dead. 
uh, more or less. It's um, and for 120 points because the librarian along with the Moritat is the most expensive upgrade for a console. I think it's 45 points off the base. So we're talking 105 points base. If you put a psychic hood, 120 points. That's the same price as a Praetor uh, for oh, yeah. a console. Oh yeah, they're, I mean they're pricey points wise, and maybe that's why we haven't seen as many of them on our meta. If you really think about it, because other than you, myself, and probably about three or four other guys, most people are still kind of in the force building phase here in Malaysia. We're not playing 3,500 point games. We're not playing 4,000 point games, 5,000 point games. Um, if I'm going to run a library, and I'm not going to run them at 2K, I'm not right. I think there's better options as you've alluded to. I'm probably not even going to run them in my list at 2.5K because I believe in boys over toys. Uh, and so a librarian probably, for me, in my play style, wouldn't be a choice either. But yeah, I think that's why our meta probably hasn't seen them, because we're just not running bigger games where the, the points isn't much of, a, much of an issue. Yeah, I, c I can agree. Uh, I'm always trying to squeeze in this and that in my points, taking off uh, five points here, ten points there, <laughs> just to try and fit things. Putting dedicated 120 points, uh, or even 105 points, to do... Uh, a one-trick pony, I'll say. It's like in terms of it, it does what it's there for. But if your army's not built around it, or it's not a key focus of your army, then the points can be spent better elsewhere. Exactly, and a recon squad with five sniper rifles, and all of a sudden he goes poof. Um, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree with you. I mean, I I don't sink the points into it. But again, if we were playing a bigger bigger points game, yeah, why not? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably have to take one for a test run, even though I don't think it's very fluffy for my Death Guard. Uh, but my Iron Hands certainly would have no problem with it. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I can see that. Just uh, I'm taking some time to, to look at the model itself. It's Sometimes these models grow on you. Like the, the last ones have grown on me. This, it's, I don't think it will unless I can think of a significant conversion for who this could be. And even then, like you, like we pointed out, it's not hard to make this out of the plastic bits um, to do that. So yeah, very, very underwhelmed by by the release here, which is likely to be one of their last releases for a while, uh, according to the announcement, right? Yeah, that's what it says in the article. If you read further down and you're not guilty like I am sometimes of only reading the first half or two-thirds of the article, uh, if you read further down, it says that uh, Heresy Thursdays are going to take a break. Boo. Um, but there will be some reveals at Warhammer Fest in two weeks. Yay. Uh, but yes, there is also an exemplary battle coming soon. So yeah, there is some new stuff coming, but we're not going to get the weekly drops like we have been getting. Yeah, that's disappointing from my point of view as well. It's nice to have these weekly updates. I, it de again, it depends on how much they release at Warhammer Fest, if they release a whole bunch of peaks, sneak peeks, or if it li literally is just an extension of what they do, so basically another Warhammer, oh, sorry, Heresy Thursday kind of release where they announce one or two models. Um, it's really going to come down to it. I've got a feeling that Warhammer Fest is going to be about the new book, more than anything else um i don't like we could be pleasantly surprised we are we've been praying we've been hoping for mark fives plastic mark fives these kind of things or plastic other desirables plastic assault marines um so look we can we can hope there's a big announcement for for warhammer fest but it's sad that I we don't... can't look forward to it in terms of a weekly basis yeah. Yeah, well, I'm with you on the on the. I'm lowering my expectations for Warhammer Fest because if you really think about it, June is always the big drop each each year, right? When they make their their big money, their big splash, it's always in June. Uh, I'm sure whatever's happening at Warhammer Fest is going to probably be around a bit of that. Um, you know, if you look at the uh, the big Warhammer reveals that they've had online. Over the past few months, there haven't been massive ones available for Heresy in terms of the, the volume of, co of content that they've done in those. So, yeah, I don't have huge expectations for Warhammer Fest. Um, hopefully, there'll be something. Uh, I mean, I am excited about this this Exemplary Battles article that's coming because it, it's going to download Imperialis Militia, which I think, fingers crossed, can be cool. 
the solar ox are not in the best best place these days i don't think it's that great of a list uh, but the the militia could be interesting and, the, and again the hobbyist of me gets excited by stuff like this yeah i'm saying well, we well, look, i've been focusing mainly on the space marine side of plastic but bringing out some of the other heresy range in plastic so the solar auxilia god the sorry the um the mechanicus if they announce something like that that'd be huge like mechanicus in plastic uh solar auxilia in plastic that would um that could open a whole new game base for people to come into the horus who don't just want to paint uh shiny space marines yeah i've 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 built up a massive i've been hoarding let's just be honest i've been hoarding the imperial navy breachers from kill team because they're essentially in solar ox armor they don't have the right weapon options for every single model, but that can be easily converted and you'll have to file off, you know, the, the inquisition looking symbols and whatnot. But I've been hoarding those for a solar ox list. I've been hoarding the death core of Krieg models for a militia list. Um, so I'm going to do something just bur to spice it up a little bit and not play Marine on Marine all the time. And I think it'll look great on the channel as well. If we have uh, one of these other forces represented. Yeah. So, well, look, I, I don't really have much to say about the library anymore. Have you got anything you kind of want to add? No, not really. I mean, I think, again, overall verdict, meh. Uh, hobby potential, yes. Uh, is it useful in games? Yep. But uh, no, not an exciting drop, especially if this is going to be the last Heresy Thursday drop in a while. I, they should have gone out with a bang, in my opinion. Yep, I can agree with you there. Well, the, uh, the bright side is... We're not done with our Heresy Thursdays here at Forest Wargaming. We will be back next Thursday. So what we're looking to do is bring you a bit more of this type of content. And we're looking to talk about the individual legions. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a poll on the channel for which legion you'd like us to address first. We're looking to maybe go a bit more in depth, how to build an army there, what's good and bad, a bit about the lore. Just have a, a general deep dive into each of the available legions. Absolutely. So we are definitely not going anywhere. We're going to continue to bring a lot of content each week. And yeah, use that poll. Tell us what you want to hear. We don't have to go in order of the legions. We can start with whichever one you want. Now, granted, Rich and I, we don't play every single legion. Um, but we're happy to give you our thoughts uh, as if we were a newer player approaching some of these legions. Or for the ones that we are familiar with, we'll give you some, some tips and tricks based on our experience and whatnot. Yeah. Well, anyway, from us at Far East Wargaming, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you very soon and back next Thursday for another one of these discussions. Monday, you'll see the drop of another battle report. So please like and subscribe to stay tuned to our latest releases. From us at Far East Wargaming, have a good day and see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Happy Wargaming.